Okay, the examination of the abdomen should also include the auscultation. Really, in the auscultation of the abdomen, one should listen for bowel sounds and one should listen for the arterial brewing and for friction rub and for venous hum. Really, the following points are suggested to be auscultated. First of all, one should listen over a mic burning point. The mic burning point really is a point between lateral one third and medial two third over which stethoscope should be applied and listen for bowel sounds. Really the comment here about the bowel sound you have just to comment whether the bowel sound is present or absent. You haven't the right to say absent bowel sound unless two minutes are passed and you cannot hear any bowel movement while bowel sound if it is present sometimes the bowel sound appear to be a low pitch and rumbling in character which is suggestive of for example in hunger in hungry patients and in uh, carcinoid syndrome and severe jaw bleeding and so on and sometimes it has a high pitch with tinkling character when there is a fluid plus air inside the bowel, um, that's to say it is a characteristic of abdominal obstruction. Really, but during clinical training, we comment upon the bowel sound of just present or absent. You can also comment about its presence of whether it is a low pitch, high pitch, tinkling in character or rumbling in character and so on. Then after this point, you have to check over the right hypochondrium for the presence of hepatic friction rub and hepatic brewy. Really brewy means systolic murmur that is discontinuous, not continuous, but well localized and may be heard here due to for example IV malformation or hepatocellular carcinoma. Friction rub occurs due to perihepatitis here whether due to inflammation or due to malignancy. After that, one should listen over the left hypochondrium for splenic brewy and for splenic friction rub. Really, splenic brewy here may suggest also AV malformation and the friction rub may suggest perisplenitis. After that, listen over the implicas for venous hum. Venous hum is different from hepatic brewy in that the Venous hum is also a murmur, systolic murmur, but it is continuous. The origin of it is from the vein rather than from the artery, as in the case of hepatic uh, brewery. Its presence here really suggests the presence of portal hypertension, and the sign here is called Kinaway sign. After that, listen over the implicas for abdominal aortic atherosclerosis for brewery and also below the implicas for the bifurcation of the aorta you may hear systolic brewing in case of atherosclerosis after that 2 to 3 cm above and lateral to the implicas here listen for renal artery stenosis with the resultant brewing after that listen over the femoral vessel also for the presence of systolic brewery which assist in the diagnosis of generalized atherosclerosis. Lastly, in the auscultation of the abdomen, one should really practice what we call the succession splash. But before that, we have to ask the patient to, or really we have to ask the patient one question and to tell him that we are going to perform such a maneuver. Okay. Okay. If the period elapsed more than four hours, any succession splash here is significant. While less than this uh, period of about two hours or less than two hours, less than four hours is uh, less significant. First of all, I should practice the succession splash without a stethoscope in such a manner. I'll just quickly and rhythmically shake the chest and listen for any succession splash and then I should, I should listen via 
the stethoscope by shaking also the chest of the patient. If there is any succession splash, succession splash really mimicking the sounds obtained when a bottle is filled into its half amount with water and then shake. The sound is similar to that. Once you finish the auscultation of the abdomen, you have to get a permission from the examination committee that you are would like to perform genital examination and to check for the anus rectum and to perform digital rectal examination, check for hernial orifices and lastly for the renal angle tenderness. Really I love it all these issues and you can read about it in your textbook of uh, clinical examination but I'll show you the way of how to check for renal angle tenderness in such a manner okay first of all you have to know where is the renal angle renal angle or costal vertebral angle from the back the lowest portion of the back the lowest portion this is the lowest portion this is the 12th Rib, and here also the 12th rib. First of all, you have to check it with your thumb in such a manner and check your patient if he had been winced or not. That's to say, he felt that there is a pain. If it is not obtained by this maneuver, you have to percuss with a fist. Okay, just like this. If any tenderness is elicited here, this is an indication for renal angle tenderness and may indicate a pathology there. Okay, after that, we had finished the examination of the abdomen and I am greatly thankful for your listening.